So, is the Mediterranean diet all hype? Mm. All right, so I got another one for you today. What do you call a bad Mediterranean restaurant? Falafel. <laughs> That one I actually really enjoyed. If you really think about the word falafel and then falafel. <laughs> what up guys and welcome back to the Fit Man Cook Kitchen. This is Bread Comes with Cool Kev. I added the cool part in there. It just says Kevin, but whatever. <laughs> so if you follow health and wellness news, at least in the U.S., then you may be familiar with the U.S. News and World Report. They pretty much report on everything from top universities, top careers, best travel destinations, and of course, you guessed it, best diets. So recently, they set the internet ablaze when they reported on the best diets for overall health for 2019. And I think that people were less concerned about what was named the best diet for 2019 and more concerned about what was not listed, and that was the keto. <gasps> I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> because how could the most popular diet out right now not be included in the top three? But not only was keto not in the top three, it came in at a whopping number 38 out of 41 for best overall diets. However, it did tie for second place along with the Atkins diet for best weight loss diet, which is not surprising since taking out carbs from your diet will likely cause a dramatic drop in weight. And in case you're wondering and nodding your head right now thinking that, well, vegan's the way to go, well, let me tell you that the vegan diet did marginally better. It came in at, an, at a number 20, and the vegetarian diet scored significantly better at number 11, and the derivative of that diet, the flexitarian diet, came in at number three, which is basically eating meat from time to time. So to be honest, the results did not shock me. If anything, they just strengthened my own personal resolve to become a lot more plant dominant. And that's something that I frequently encourage y'all to do, which is basically making plants the star of your dish while also incorporating a sensible amount of animal products. That's just my fancy way of saying a balanced diet. Now, to be fair, just because U.S. News & World Report published the rankings, it doesn't necessarily make it the official rule of law for healthy standards for all of us. You are the best determinant of that. So whatever you can manage and whatever keeps you healthy in your body and your mind, that's the best diet. However, the rankings are good because they help to shed light on other forms of healthy living that we may want to explore. And since our eyes have momentarily deviated from keto and paleomania just for the moment, let's take a closer look at the Mediterranean diet to see what all this hype is about. So first off, what is the Mediterranean diet? Essentially, it's a Mediterranean-inspired approach to healthy eating. So just think lots of color and lots of fresh, natural ingredients. Now, while there are no overarching guidelines that you would normally find with the restrictive diet, the Mediterranean diet does have some central themes, if you will. So let's tackle them one by one. First, the diet places an emphasis on plants, specifically incorporating fresh ingredients and eliminating processed foods. This is probably the most restrictive part of the diet. It does encourage us to be a lot more plant dominant. And again, this means that there's a strong emphasis on wholesome plant-based foods. These include fruits and veggies to legumes, grains, and nuts. This is what I essentially appreciate about the diet because we eliminate a lot of science and artificial ingredients from our daily regimen. We eat real food and our bodies love it. And by eating so many fresh ingredients, we begin to learn the flavor of food so we can better pair them together. So essentially this diet makes us all better cooks. One of the best examples of this is the most well-known dish, it's tabbouleh. If you're not familiar, it's cracked wheat or bulgur with finely chopped parsley, mint, tomatoes, cucumber, lemon, olive oil, sea salt, and pepper. It's fresh and varied, and it gives us robust flavor and texture with each bite, which raises another important element of this theme is that the diet prioritizes using fresh herbs and spices over salt to give more food flavor. So if you've ever asked yourself and wondered, how do people know what herbs to use? The Mediterranean diet would be a great place for you to start. Rosemary, saffron, cardamom, thyme, dill, sage, and the list goes on. Tons of flavor without even adding an ounce or drop of salt. And no, I'm not saying that salt is bad. It's just that there's an over-reliance on salt because we often don't know how to incorporate herbs. Next, I'll touch on oils and fats. Now, generally speaking, the diet encourages more monosaturated fats over saturated fats. So oils such as olive and canola and even grapeseed oil are highly encouraged. 
Since coconut oil is higher in saturated fat, it's probably one of the ones that you want to avoid or at least lessen if you're going to follow this diet. That being said, butter is pretty much a no-go on this diet. And if you're bummed about the butter, it's kind of a saving grace that you can consume items like tahini, which is ground sesame, and other natural nut butters. And snacking on things like raw nuts and seeds are all highly encouraged. And since there's a ton of flavor in those, you don't feel like you're missing out too much on that butter. Next theme I'll deal with is protein. Even though the diet is plant dominant, there is room for some animal protein, primarily poultry and fish. These are eaten at least twice a week. Eating red meat is allowed, yet it is limited to only a few times each month. This sounds similar to a flexitarian diet, which is essentially a vegetarian with meat thrown in there every once in a while. In terms of dairy, it is allowed, but it's very limited. Some people encourage fat-free dairy products while on this diet, but I would recommend staying away from those because they're often filled with hidden sugar and they are heavily processed. So I stick to things like whole or 2% milk or reduced fat, but no like non-fat items. The last tenet that I'll deal with is exercise. The Mediterranean diet is one of the very few that encourages regular exercise and or activity. It's nothing exhausting like a CrossFit workout. However, you should be getting sufficient exercise or activity daily or weekly. And this could be anything, y'all. I'm talking about walking around your neighborhood or your local mall, hiking, biking, mowing the lawn, cleaning out the garage. It could be anything, really. You just need to be active. And while this is not related to exercise, it should be noted that drinking wine in moderation is allowed. Yes, you can get your drink on on this diet. So if you're the type of person that needs a weekly fix of red wine, then you're in luck. Drinking in moderation about a glass per day is not uncommon when on this diet. I think the general rule is that women should have about five ounces daily and men can drink up to 10 ounces, but I don't think that's really gender specific. I think you can mix and match there. You know, so women, if you wanna get your drink on up to 10 ounces, there you go. Now that being said, drinking alcohol also requires restraint. So if you're unable to limit yourself on a daily basis, I just say to stay away from it and just for the time being. And of course it goes without saying that if you have a medical problem, then you should probably avoid drinking wine altogether. So basically you get to eat fresh ingredients and still eat meat and drink red wine. And the only thing you really have to do is just stay active. I mean, that's just hard to say no to. But I know what you're thinking. The golden question still remains, can you lose weight following the Mediterranean diet? Well, absolutely you can lose weight, but that really all depends on your calorie input and calorie expenditure. Are you in a calorie deficit at the end of the day and or week? Then of course you will lose weight. And if you're eating the optimum number of calories for you and your goals, you'll reach those goals much faster. With the Mediterranean diet, more than anything else, you get sensibility. And speaking from personal experience and working with y'all and listening to thousands of y'all over the years, that sensibility piece, that solves a majority of our problems. It's hard to be committed to something with so many rules. It's just like being in a relationship in junior high school. The slightest innocent misstep results in a tragic breakup. <laughs> but following a diet that doesn't eliminate entire food groups and is actually pretty practical, has some overarching themes that are doable, it's likely that something like that will yield much more success because you can actually do it. Another thing that should be considered is just how easy meal prep would be. With a stronger emphasis on fresh ingredients, it's easier to prep large batches of individual food items and pair them together to mix and match them throughout the week. Imagine prepping um, a fragrant or spicy quinoa, some savory chickpeas, some baked fish, some roasted veggies, hummus, and even baked chicken, and then creating several different meals throughout the week. So with that, you get way more variety while you save money and when you have your food prepared, you can keep your weight loss and your fitness goals at the forefront of your mind so you can achieve your goals. And what I'll also highlight is just how satisfying this diet can be. The reliance on wholesome grains and healthy fats leave you feeling energized and satisfied for much longer. If you're a frequent snacker and you struggle with hunger throughout the day, then this diet may be much more of your style. This is something that I've struggled with because Feeling full and satisfied will help you to slow down mindlessly grazing and munching on food. I unknowingly tried this diet about two years ago. Right after I did my eight-week keto experiment, I did a food tour in Tel Aviv. My diet pretty much followed the guidelines of the Mediterranean diet. I felt full and energized throughout the entire trip, 
And what I remember most was feeling fresh because for about 11 days, I didn't have one bite of processed or packaged food. While I had eaten eggplant before the trip, I enjoyed it several different ways while I was there. And it reminded me that there are tons of ways to enjoy the same exact darn foods. So sometimes I get tunnel vision and I don't explore new ways to enjoy foods. But with the Mediterranean diet, the food options are literally endless. So is the Mediterranean diet all hype? I don't think so. I'm much more inclined to think that this diet is a lifelong way of eating since it's based off the many cultures of the Mediterranean region. So that, coupled with its practicality, lead me to believe that it has some real staying power. And one final aspect of this diet and lifestyle is how food is shared and it just brings people together. This communal connection fosters lively, authentic conversations and interactions. So we not only nourish our bodies, but we also nourish our minds and our souls because we're eating together. So how can a positive way of life be sustained for so many years, be all hype? Well, it can't be. Comment below if you tried the Mediterranean diet and give your thoughts about what was shared here today. I wanna know if you think it is a lifelong diet or it is a passing trend. We wanna know. Thank you for tuning in to Breadcrumbs with Cool Kev. Until next time, I want you all to keep it healthy, but of course, never, ever boring. Ooh! Bye, guys. Bye.